justifiable to me. Thanks. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M C C A R T H Y S at AmherstMA.gov. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. Uh, I'll take a roll call of attendance. Gaston. Here. Doug. Here. Kelly. Here. Dylan. Here. And I am here. Um, we're all here. So uh, first thing on the agenda is public comment. And this is general public comment unrelated to anything further done on the agenda, any hearings or anything. Is anyone here for public comment? Um, if so, please raise your hand by hitting the hand raise hand button at the bottom. Is anyone raising their hand? No. OK. So next up is licenses. So first up, we have special short-term alcohol serving licenses, um, SST 22-34 through um, 29, 30, 31, and 32, Gabrielle Gould, Wine and Malt. Um, Gabrielle, would you like Hi. to talk about these? Hey, how are you? Good. How is everybody? Good. Thank you. Good. So you have the music programs back. Yeah, so I think today we're in front of you with four of our returning Friday summer music series on the South Common, as well as we have um, offered to help the town with their Juneteenth event, um, which will be this coming Sunday. So I know that we're right on the heels of that one, and I'm sorry about that. We got brought in um, a little bit late. Oh, that's fine. Um, so does anyone have any questions about these? So is your... Uh, your procedure and the security and all that is going to be set the same as it was last year. Has anything changed? Um, no, nothing has changed. We will have myself and another TIP certified person at the door of the four music events. And okay. at the door, we all know that means the table. Okay. Um, we are once again working with local or as local as possible, but we do have White Lion Brewery, which are moving into downtown Amherst as a permanent brick and mortar business. We'll be working with our friends over at Wheelhouse and their product Artifact Cider and bringing in Black Birch Vineyards and all three of those tables will know that no matter what age you are, if you do not have a bracelet, a non-transferable bracelet authorized by us, you do not get a drink. Um, it worked very, very well last year. Um, we are looking for a larger attendance this year. We're bringing in much bigger musicians and bigger known names. So we're really hoping that this is a very fun, full family event with people coming to the area for this event. Awesome. Fantastic. Wait, is yep. And then the Juneteenth, I do want to be very specific that bracelets will also be given, but because the layout is very different than how the bid does the summer, the uh, bracelets will be given at the actual table where there will be tip certified bartenders provided by Bistro 63, a local BIPOC owned business, um, and they too will be serving White Lion uh, Brewery there. So it fits in with the theme as well, but we will not be having a separate table to card, but they will be carding there. They will be carding there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, any questions from anyone about this or yes, Dylan. I just remember last year we were talking about um, just water distribution to people. What did we end up doing last year and then how did that work out? So we do free water um, and that worked out very well. We are also hoping, hoping to bring bubble tea to the common this summer. We're, we're talking to some bubble tea vendors for the under 21 set. Um, and this year we're having creme brulee and a charcuterie board um, like table. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and we might have an oyster tent. So we're sort of expanding a little bit. Um, but we also really, of course, want to encourage people to do takeaway from local restaurants. And we have several restaurants partnering with us to do picnic baskets. Okay. Wow. That sounds great. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we, we, of course, bring a water bubbler for the band. So they have cold water. Okay. Cold water. Great. Um, any questions for Gabrielle? Any other questions? If not, yes, guest on. 
Uh, thank you, Gabrielle. Just wondering if there's any other, you know, learning that you did last year that that you're implementing or, or trying out this this round. I think we were just so impressed with how well um, the events were respected and how, I mean, I think the worst day I had was I picked up three pieces of garbage. Um, and of course we, we take away all the garbage that night. We have a, um, the bid has a, a little golf cart that we do all of our downtown cleanup with. We do not want to, and I know that you gave us permission last year to stop uh, circling off with caution tape, the entire uh, perimeter. A, caution tape is exceedingly expensive, shocker. Um, but also it's just, it's super wasteful because you really can't reuse it. And I just, I, it's like, you know, here we are trying to do something like outdoorsy and nice and we're just adding more microplastics. So we would like this year to continue our perimeter walks with our volunteers, um, making sure nobody leaves with the cans or the cups. And we, I don't think stopped a single person last year. So that's a good thing. Okay, great, wonderful, sounds good. Um, if there's nothing else, is there a motion to, oh wait, do we want to approve these separate, like one group and then a second one, or do we just want to do them all? Can we just do them all? They are all under the same insurance policy. I don't know they if that are. makes a difference um, okay. as to how you do this, but they are different events. I, I consider the four Friday nights one sort of section and the Juneteenth its own event. Okay. All right. And, um, but we could probably, we could probably just do them all. Um, yeah, is there a motion to approve Doug? Um, I thought I had a question for Steve, but now I've forgotten. Uh, oh, I know it was. I just had a real quick question for Steve. Um, we're not, you know, everything's in order as far as uh, signatures and documentation and everything for these. There's no sort of outstanding pieces of, of information that we need for, for the license. Is that correct? Yes, they have all been signed off on by the police chief, fire chief, and town manager, and we have chased down um, all the documentation. Um, insurance is not required until five days before the event, but we do already have that, so these will be um, good to go once they are approved. Fantastic. So on that note, I will move to approve the five short-term licenses listed in the agenda for the, uh, the bid. Thank you, Doug. Uh, for the motion, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan, um, for the second. Any further discussion? If there is none, we'll take a vote. Guest on? Aye. Doug? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, uh, five to zero. They is unanimous. The licenses are approved. Thank you so much for coming in, Gabrielle. I hope it's a great summer. Um, and I was wondering, we are gonna talk about the lunch cart regulations a little bit later, if you'd be able to stay or pop back on. Great. Do you know what time about on the agenda that is? Um, probably a little bit later down, although we could, I don't know. How about I, um, how about I email you? Actually, I, I believe you have a couple of uh, downtown businesses um, looking as well. So I might just stay on if that's okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank Great. You. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. So the next, um, next item on the agenda is the transfer, the continued hearing of um, Shilpa Enterprises to Oxbow Wines. This is uh, Cousins to Provisions, as I remember. And do we need to reopen this, Steve? Yes. Okay, so is there a motion to reopen the, to reopen the hearing? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, all in favor, let's say, uh, let's take a vote. Guest on. Aye. Doug. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye, the hearing is open for provisions. So this is just to, has anything moved forward on this, Steve, or? Um... Um, I spoke to uh, Mr. McAmis, one of the owners, um, about half an hour ago. Um, he said um, they are still working on negotiating the lease with um, their landlord, which is a required document for uh, the application. Um, I believe uh, Corey Tellman from Provisions is here to, to speak more on this. Okay, Mr. Yep. Tellman, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, we were uh, expecting that the lease negotiations would have been finished and we would have a signed lease uh, by the time we got here, but uh, I've been told that there are some things still being worked out, so um, we certainly hope to have it done in time for the next hearing. Okay, so um, do we just continue the hearing to our next meeting on the, I think it's like the 30th? The 30th Thank you. Meeting? Yeah, is that, does anyone have any questions? I would only say, will we be meeting on the 30th or will we be, oh, right. I know we were doing first and third. Right, right, right. No, you're correct. Sorry about that. 
So it is not the 30th, it is July 7th that we're meeting. And then the 21st. So it would be continued to July 7th at five. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about this? And if not, is there a motion to continue the hearing? Yes, Doug. So should we make a motion to close the current hearing and continue it? Or, or should we do the continuation first and then I think we should do the continuation first. So, so, the, so the hearing automatically, does it automatically close, Steve, if it's you move to you vote to continue it or does it stay open? Like, it stays I, open, but um, that is the intention because once it's closed, it's closed. So oh, um, okay. it would be being, right. yeah, being continued so it can be continued right. next time. So In that case, I will, I will move to continue the public hearing on uh, the transfer of all alcohol license uh, to, what did we say, July 7th? July 7th. At 5 p.m.? Yes. All right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? If not, let's take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Doug? Aye. Ellie? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, uh, five to zero. The hearing is continued until July 7th at 5 p.m. Thank you so much for coming in, Mr. Tellman, and we look forward to resolving everything on the 7th. Thank you. We do as well. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay. So next up is discussion items. So um, since Gabrielle is here, can we just put do lunch cart first in case she has to be somewhere? So I sent everybody a new draft with some stuff changed around, and I tried to fill in some of the blanks of the spacing and um, uh, let me see if I can pull this up for a second. I do. Uh, just a couple of questions. Do we want to change food truck lunch? I looked around around the state and the lunch cart or food truck or mobile food establishment regulations are many and various and different towns do very different things. So, um, you know, I put, tried to define short term and I wasn't sure what we wanted to do. What I did do is I took just, if we wanted to get something very like on, on the books done very quickly, I kind of took out seasonal because I think that's a different conversation. And I put in short term in case somebody wanted to bring in a lunch cart for um, roughly the same period as a liquor license, a short term liquor license. So I said, what would be a weekend would be like 24 hours to up to about 72 hours. And then I tried to change all of seasonal to short term. Um, under section five, I um, looked around and found that some of the municipalities have required space requirements between the number of, um, uh, between the, the bumpers of the, the lunch carts, if there's more than one, um, and then had everything, it, it's, the lunch cart license is applied for in conjunction with a short term liquor license. I had the referred it back to our um, regulations for consumption of alcohol and public property. Um, I mean, for new locations, I put a kind of a shorter, a, stat, um, a butter's notice of 300 feet from established restaurants or private properties. I mean, this is all open to discussion. You can ch totally change it. And then um, what I did notice is that uh, parking fees and rules for on street lunch carts, and I hadn't thought about this, but a lot of people had the lunch carts register for three parking spaces, just so that there would be enough space around. I think that is to do with kind of environmental reasons, just to make sure that there wasn't um, if the exhaust coming out. They didn't kind of, it didn't kind of create a, a bad atmosphere and there were rooms for, there was room for firefighters or like if something broke down for somebody to come in and take care of the lunch cart. So that's all. And I did ask uh, Gabrielle to read over the, I sent her a copy of the regulations, plus the select board old regulations regulations. And Gabrielle, I was just wondering if you had any thoughts in general about food trucks in Amherst. And I know it's kind of a sensitive topic sometimes because of the no, I, order restaurants. So. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a great topic. And, you know, one of the things that we would like to really encourage is our other town centers to sort of activate and revitalize them, okay. um, especially I think a lot about North Amherst and South Amherst, where there aren't that many brick and mortar restaurants yet. Um, uh -huh. You know, I think when you look at where like Tina, I don't think we we need some. We we've got a really good vibe going down there. 
mm -hmm. look at more like where the old hot pot was, um, that area to do like a, a really incredible, um, I'd love to see someone bring into North Amherst or that area, a food cart festival or a food truck festival and really start to like bring people into those areas and see the beauty and, and what they do have to offer. So I think that this is a really important thing. And the the more simple that Amherst can make it, and I don't know if it's possible to join in with our surrounding communities and say, if you're licensed in one, we can bring you into others, which other communities do do, we don't. And I don't know if that's something that we could work with um, the licensing commission on, if Rob Mora would be interested in taking part of that conversation, because it is um, difficult and punitive to get a whole nother set of licenses. Not, I mean, I think that this license, of course, is very important and having a permit to bring the card in is is very is is that's that's normal that's de rigueur but we run into some other issues where they need a separate health inspection they need a separate um you know they need separate inspections that can get very cumbersome and exhausting and we lose the ability to bring them in okay okay all right thank you very much that's really good so steve who would i talk to about that's rob mora so um yeah, Rob Moore oversees the Inspection Services Department in general. Susan Malone mm -hmm. is the health inspector who Susan, usually right. deals with food trucks. Um, and I really don't know what the um, – it's an interesting question because um, I've heard I've heard things like, you know, some, some lunch carts can operate in different towns with just one health license, but that's not the way we've done it in Amherst before. So I would be curious to see, um, you know, what, what the real state law is because I'm not aware. Okay. And maybe we could help and do some research and talk to some of the other town uh, buildings that, that allow that and see how that they're they're collaborating on those. Okay. And I'm also happy to be part of the discussion with Rob. Okay. Yeah, we should um, talk to him about that. Um, do you know off the top of your head what towns allow kind of a cooperative license? Or I don't know what you would call it, but a shared uh, we'll, we'll toss in a legal term since Gaston's here. I'll say by hearsay, I have heard from other food carts that East Hamp, North Hamp, uh, Holyoke and Springfield all let the trucks go sort of throughout those areas without a lot of fanfare. Um, but that's what I've heard just from food truck vendors who refuse to come into Amherst. Huh. Okay. So I'd, I'd rather actually speak with their economic development teams yeah. or their their town uh, council than, you know, sort of go off of what I've heard from individual trucks. Oh, I, and I'm not holding you to it. I just was sort of oh, yeah. curious about that because yeah. it would be nice to get some more in town. Yep. Okay. Gaston? I guess I, I, I wonder if for the short term um, uh, license here, we can, you know, recognize uh, the uh, inspection of another town, provided our own uh, health inspectors have looked at the requirements of those towns and feel that they're sufficient, at least for that kind of window. And maybe we can, you know, try to put one town on the list and add, add the towns that seem to have food trucks that seem to pass muster, at least to kind of waive inspection for, for a weekend. Good idea. Okay. All right. That was a good question. If I may, on that topic, I think yeah. you know, the idea is a, a reciprocal agreement because um, we want it to go both ways. I mean, you know, that that exists in a variety of kind of licensures, you know, sometimes like teaching licenses, there's a reciprocal agreements between uh, neighboring, uh, neighboring states. This is a little more local than that. But <clears throat> You know, we may be much more comfortable and how we might think about it is you know the a lot of the regulations relative to that inspection are going to be identical because they're driven by state law and that sort of thing however you know we may um in in choosing that we may feel there are certain communities that are better at, at the process so maybe some communities we want to make uh as you know sort of specific arrangements with and others that we're not as comfortable with. And so it may become not just any licenses are reciprocally appreciated or, or acknowledged license, but certain ones. Mm -hmm. Which, mm -hmm. 
Just to um, just to frame the discussion, as I think it's important as it comes to this question, um, the statutory authority for the license commission. On this question is only in the public way, um, which is um, I, I liked your I liked your title, Mary. I thought mobile food establishments in the public way would be a perfect title for it. Um, but um, so I don't really know if um, the license commission would be able to to authorize that and that kind of scheme in particular because. Um, you know, the, the food, the food licensing is almost, um, is separate okay. and almost, um, almost a prerequisite because even if you're on private property, the license commission wouldn't have any authority, but th they would still need a food license. So, right. um, that might need to be something that's done at a, at a higher policy level, okay. but I do think it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. I think otherwise you you guys have a really great document here and one that is, um, conducive and, while I, of course, will will kind of fight against having um, a, a festival of food trucks in the actual downtown mm -hmm. with 43 brick and mortar restaurants, um, I'd love to see something like this take root and be really successful in one of our other town centers. Right. Okay. Yes, Gaston. You know, just to Steve's point, I, I uh, no doubt we we're not in a position to um, make judgments about um, health uh, inspections, but I think we could provide that if um it meets the standard of the uh, of the health inspector then we you know be, we would approve it it would be ideal to align ourselves with the health inspectors to see if they are willing to open it up a bit more um at least as a long-term project yeah i absolutely yeah. agree with that yeah now, mary may we give you just little comments please do please do okay um, I mean, I, I, with respect to the private property, I, it seemed to me that um, private property certainly needs a license if they're selling food. Right. But we don't license that. I mean, that would be, is that right, Steve? Like, that's not. Yeah. Related. So that it's would need the, that's the health department. The, yeah. The health department zoning can okay. apply. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, the statutory uh, authority for this particular regulation set only covers the public way, right, which, which does I mean. include the common in, in the commons. It but. does include the common. Okay. So Gabrielle, where are you thinking in North Amherst? That, are you talking about something? I mean, I'm looking at the mill district and with the loss mm -hmm. of Jake's and, and sort of, you know, reactivating that area with a, you know, you know, weekly or, or once a month, six oh, months okay. of the year, like unbelievable right. food truck festival where we bring a whole bunch of trucks, beer tents, you know, not me, not me. I want to make that clear. I'm not trying to, you know, right. <laughs> I've got enough on my plate, but I'd love right. to see that. Okay. Um, I also think about South Amherst. We've got those beautiful greens um, in front of the South Amherst library, um, right. you know, where apparently you're not allowed to ride a horse on them, but maybe we could bring some great food trucks in there and activate that area. Um, mm -hmm. I just think that there's a lot of beautiful open green space that we don't activate on a regular basis for our okay. community and that we could do more. So the, we don't, so the mill district is private, is that correct? Right. I didn't quite correct? understand that. So right. now I do. Okay. So that wouldn't be. And so unless they were selling alcohol along to, along with the food truck, we wouldn't have to, that's not really something we deal with. But the South Amherst Common, do we license that also? Is that? That is part of the public way, yeah. Okay, yep. okay so South Amherst, so that's ours. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's good. And there are some, you know, some street side parking areas up at the um, the mill district, which might end up to be easier for whoever runs that, because um, I know the zoning was uh, quite specific and litigated um, up there. <laughs> And um, you know, zoning does apply to food trucks, and that's actually been another challenge too. Um, okay, interesting. Oh, another thing I really events. sorry. Uh, and I, no, no, Stephen, I'm sorry. Um, one of the things that I'm very curious about is right now we have a, a beautiful playground down in Kendrick Park that is really being utilized, but there's not really any coffee shop or or lunch shop down there. And there's a interest in on my side anyway to see if a vendor would like to come in for the summers and the fall when parents are down there with their little humans and have something there on a, on a regular basis. So um, I'm, I've been talking to a couple of different entities about that. Okay. All right. That would be kind of nice. Yeah. Um, was there, uh, thank you. Was there any other feedback on the regulations? Anything that you saw glaringly wrong or mm. awkward or just on? On the, I don't think we need a minimum on the short term. Oh no. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll take that off. Is seventy-two hours or three days fine with everybody? 
A question I have is if somebody wanted to do on a monthly basis, would that be considered short term or would that be? Uh, so they get a license for one month. See, that's what we were. I, I took we were going to considering a seasonal license and then that okay. conversation sort of morphed into should it be a short term and do we tie it in with the, the short term liquor license so just for. I just for the, this this draft I just turned it into short term and made the made a maximum of three days, so I don't okay. know if we wanted to. Make it more elastic and have a monthly license or a seasonal license or I mean I think sometimes with a food truck and seasonal they might as well just pay for the whole. Well, it's so it's so reasonable um, yeah. this this particular fee structure that I don't think you have to. I mean, if someone's going to come in and do a month, they can just pay the fee. Right. Okay. Uh, especially, I think I I is it my understanding we this board agreed to prorate liquor licenses, but not food truck licenses, correct? Because that would come down to like literally pennies on the dollar. Yes, I think so. Okay, great. Yeah, I I think that this is just something if somebody knows that they want to try it for three months, they can just pay the. Right. The uh, very nominal fee. Okay. Um, all right. So I will change that. And um, any other comments or questions? I can. So, Steve, should we, before I do the next draft, should, I do, should we meet with Susan and Rob? I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that uh, reciprocal arrangement, which is not for the. Um, for a short term. And I, I did have one question for Gabrielle while she's here. Yeah. Um, I know in our pre, pre, uh, previous conversations in this topic, something that's come up is the, the question of locations, um, which I think is probably one of the stickier ones on this subject um, because the uh, prescribed locations for annual licenses are, um, some of them are okay, but some of them are not really great. And um, I think that's a big place where this kind of comes into conflict with the interests of the restaurants as well. I mean, no restaurant owner wants a food truck to be parked right outside in front of their um, in front of their building. Um, do you have any thoughts on what what a good location scheme would be for um, you know non short term licenses? Um, I I'd love to like sit down with um, a map. I, I, I when I think about outside of downtown Amherst, I think that there's a lot of possibility there, and a lot of um, you know there's a lot of parking areas that could be turned into great places. Um, again, down by Kendrick, I think a designated space that is uh, within walking and visual distance for parents on the playground would be really fantastic. I personally like where we're keeping food trucks in downtown because they stay, they seem to really stay along, especially the South Common. Um, I think everybody knows that the North Common is being rebuilt completely and that it's going to be a game changer in a lot of ways in two years when it's finished. And I think that that needs to be looked at a little bit differently. That parking lot's going to be gone. How do we activate that? Um, I like where the halal truck is. And I know that that's one of our designated spaces. Um, and I, I, I don't, you know, again, Steve, I agree with you completely. Like if you put a food truck right in front of the run of Taste Thai, Momos and Arigatos, that's a disservice and that's kind of a cruelty. But I also, I know that during La Vera Cruzana's uh, renovation, they were talking about maybe putting their food truck right in front of them. Um, and I was like, oh, well, that sort of makes sense. It's your food truck. So I don't know where the flexibility of, of wording for something like that would come in. Yeah, I actually had to tell them um, it would have to be across the street, a little bit down the street too, because of where they're located. And, yeah, they, they told me and I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting, which I respect the parameters, but at the same time, that's your brick and mortar and that's your food truck. So could we work with them to change something? Yeah. Um, that new one, my question that it always may, remains, where is the nuance and you know, the looking at individual cases something at, with something like that? Yeah, that particular situation seems like something that would come up occasionally and um, could probably be pretty easily handled by a clause or two. So, yeah. But um, I'm sure we would welcome your feedback on the locations because um, I think that's one of the more outdated parts of the uh, yeah. of the the document as it exists, and you have a better pulse on the the way the restaurants would feel than we do. I I think so. Yeah. 
it, it is difficult. And, and when I mentioned food truck, you, you see like the, the, the anxiety flares. So we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think our locations right now are, are where they're supposed to be. They're, they're well thought out. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Uh, any other questions about this? Okay. Well, um, I have my work cut out for me. So um, thanks very much. Thank you so much, Gabrielle, for um, no, thank you sticking all. around for the conversation. It was really, really helpful. And um, uh, again, hope everything goes well with the program on the common and the Juneteenth celebration. Well, we hope to see you all there. We've got lots of different music. Mr. G is finally coming back to Amherst. So, <laughs> and then some great big bands. So it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, wonderful. All right. All right. We'll see you all then. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Have a great bye evening. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. okay. So back to um, oh, rental registration program and letter to town council. So Gaston has done a draft. Yeah, sorry, um, it took me so long, uh, but I tried to capture what I, I saw to be our, our sentiment at, at when we did talk about this two meetings ago to be really number one. Um, okay, we're open to exploring being the enforcer here, uh, but kind of let's talk about it, especially since number two, we're very unclear what suspending a license means when you have tenants living in a building. And so the, the invitation was um, to uh, see if, if um, Mandy Jo Haneke would come and visit us. Um, when reading over the draft, I thought maybe the, the, the last sentence could be a, a little more uh, requesting rather than instructing, um, a little more deferential. Um, but uh, anyway, I welcome other comments. Oh, please go on. Um, any other comments? I'm trying to think of a alternative sentence. I mean, it, it could be like, could you know, just asking, could you please, and uh, if if you if you right, think yeah, this is a good yeah. if you think this is a good idea, could you coordinate, or we'll be happy to coordinate, or whatever. That was very nice. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was great, and I really liked that you um. Yeah. brought up that issue about the uh the punishment because that is really a good question so you lose your uh your rental permit now what happens do you have to right. i don't even think you can legally I mean, I'll, I'll defer to the lawyers here but i don't think you can even legally just kick out your tenants no if you don't have a no. right it seems like it's more like you'd want a kind of a receivership process or something yeah right, right. well if i may um yeah, yeah you could i mean you know, you certainly can impose financial penalties for them without them losing a tenants. I think, you know, and, and then of course, if, if it's really a sort of safety related thing, so let's say, you know, it relates to fire alarms or something like that, the building can't be occupied. So we have to, you know, they kind of need to make other arrangements for those people to be in until it's rectified. So I think there's a whole rich set of things that need to be contemplated relative to this. I think if it's purely a short term, you know, an Airbnb type circumstance, yeah, if you pull their license, then they can't have any. They can schedule any new people to be in. But you know, if it it, it could be a circumstance where even in that, where someone's rented a month, they're here for a a, a summer, you know, they're teaching a summer class at UMass or something like that for six weeks, and so they're like, oh, I'll just do a short term, you know, Airbnb for six weeks. You know, that could be a a, a, a case like what you're talking about, where <clears throat> uh, a revocation of a license would would hamstring the the place for those i mean it doesn't have anywhere to go right so and there are very i would say let's say strict but very uh powerful uh um regulation and processes around eviction um and so you know in other words tenant rights are pretty strong and so that's the other thing is that tenant rights uh if they have a you know a lease essentially um you know, do come into play. And so that'll, that'll impact what we can and can't do as in, in regard to uh, penalty. Okay. Yeah. Um. Thanks. Any other questions? 
Oh, Dylan, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, <clears throat> um, I think we can definitely keep that an option to, to revoke a uh, rental registration just as an option where I, I, I can see it being the types of uh, types of homes you might see that would have it revoked would be typically people renting to college students anyways who are having that high turnover so it would just stop that that gap and we could have i don't know some type of provision that a, a, a lease cannot be signed to to new tenants as, as part of the revocation if we wanted to go that direction where you can still keep the people you have they don't get evicted but the landlord can't just um can't just keep running to new people. And then that might also open something up as well, where it offers that protection to a tenant, where if a tenant might complain about something that they're, they're in violation of knowing that they, that they were to be, you know, evicted by the landlord for some reason, the landlord wouldn't be able to get anybody else in there. So you know, the landlord would have a financial incentive to uh, keep maybe somebody who's, who's complaining about uh, the things wrong with their, uh, with their house. Yeah. Um, anything else about the issue or about the letter in particular? No, I think it's a great letter. Um, yeah, I think we could just send it off. Maybe if it would be, if this would be amenable to you, please contact Stephen McCarthy to schedule the meeting, something like that. It's easy. That would be great. And then um, we will have a conversation with them. Okay, great. If there's not anything else on the rental registration for this evening. Nope, okay. Um, let's see, what is next? Rental registration, adult use, marijuana. Doug, any news? The update is there's no update. Oh, okay. Sorry. Great. That's all right, okay. We will keep it on there. Um, Just on, I, I have I have been hearing about that some municipalities are starting to open, uh, you know, locations where you can use on site. I don't know what what in we Massachusetts? know. Massachusetts, oh, really? Massachusetts. That's huh. what I understand. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, um, Doug, yes. I, I was in Maine recently, um, in Portland, which there are a number of of campus facilities in Portland. If you're not familiar, uh, it was interesting that way there was i believe one location that i thought must be given the other aspects of the business it seemed to me a place where social consumption could occur um i think my biggest concern just to, i'll put it out there since we're talking about this i think my biggest concern relative to that is is for the uh for the staff that work um because you know as a simple example it's like if you're a bartender you can't drink while serving right you know, in, in with regard to alcohol. And so, you know, if you're in a location that's interior and it involves, let's say, hookah smoking or something like that, of, of that, you're not able to, it, unless there's some sort of air handling or you're going to have your staff being wearing masks or something like that, you know, you're going to be uh, passively ingesting the, 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 the marijuana, which as a, as a worker, you may not personally want to partake. And number two, when we think about sort of you know, impaired judgment, which is part of why you can't drink as a bartender, we're thinking along the same lines. So, you know, it, it, the, the level of impairment is probably very, very low and all of those kind of things. But I think that's a, that's a concern I have generally around sort of social consumption is, is are the staff who are going to be doing the control of the circumstances being able to uh, remain, you know, sort of unimpaired. Right. You know, and that you know, it might be somebody who got a job that doesn't partake at all and doesn't want to, but just needs a job, mm -hmm. you know. And and or you know, the other thing, just like I said before, the sort of <clears throat> you know, we don't we regulate our, our you know, bartenders so that they can't uh, consume while on, while serving, for you know, the reason of, of being uh, in full control of their faculties. So I presume the same should apply in this circumstance. Okay. Is there any uh, any example like to, to be followed from? I'm trying to think because like like a do they have cigar bars here or I guess Dylan would you know because you don't I used to when I was in I was in Ohio there was a, uh, a hookah bar we'd go to sometimes and they had it where 
there's a room where you would go, you'd get the hookah and all that stuff. And you opened another door and you went into a kind of lounge area that was kind of disconnected in a way. I mean, they had, had cameras, it was glass viewing. You could still uh, keep an eye on what was happening in there, but it definitely created that um, that barrier from, from smoke. Oh, and it, really? I don't think you can, you know, it's not 100%, especially for something like, like marijuana where it might linger in the air and you have to have some type of uh, ventilation system. But it, it might be a little bit uh, costly to get something like that in there. Right. Um, I think it would really kind of be new construction is, is where you'd be seeing something like that. But uh, I mean, it certainly is doable um, to just have that, that area separated um, where you know, the staff are in a separate room from uh, where it's actually being consumed. Right. And then with an extensive fill strike. So Gaston, you said you heard that there were these places in other towns in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yes. I uh, let me let me get more information. I met an entrepreneur who's opening a seven-story like cannabis wonderland next to Faneuil Hall in an old building. Yeah, and he actually, I was like, this sounds like Jordan's furniture. He's like, actually, yeah, Jordan is on my board. <laughs> <laughs> they have okay. the trapeze school there. Yeah, I, they're going to have all kinds of attractions. Um, I think they're opening next year. Oh, wow. OK, well, if yeah. we can get some more information on such. A OK, room, I'll, I'll, start, I'll, I'll see what um, I can find. Yeah. yeah, figure out what kind of rooms and advanced filtration systems this place. Something I mean, I, I wonder if, if if it's too soon to get a feedback from our health inspector, because they're the they, they're the experts on on the that smoke issue. Yeah, I mean, um, Doug, do you think we should start talking or maybe later in the summer? I, I think on that particular, you know, that particular aspect we might, uh, it can't hurt to sort of pose the question because I think, okay. that, you know, because a parallel is, is like a cigar bar where people have, you know, those two different right. clubs and you can do what you want, so everybody's going to partake. But, <clears throat> um, but I think that there are, uh, you know, just what are the sort of parameters that we use around cigarette and, and tobacco smoke? right uh might be useful so if we can engage with them a little bit on that okay. um, and that's you know, tacitly what our, our board of health is to date would would probably point to to prevent social consumption um what you know if i was an entrepreneur i'd say okay great nobody can smoke but here's all the edibles right. you know i mean that's to be honest i mean you know it's uh, you know or we're going to make food with it in it i mean that's a, a thing and so mm -hmm. you know Again, I think that that would actually, and that may be the direction to go. It's like, you just can't smoke it, but you can do anything else relative to, you know, either edibles or, you know, other forms of consumption that don't involve it being, you know, in the general sort of, you know, air. I think the other thing relative to sort of that uh, smoking is that others within the same uh, environment may have, may want to partake of less. So if you think about you know, alcohol's comparisons, like I buy one beer, I drink one beer. The guy next to me wants to drink three beers, that's fine. It has no impact on me. But when you start having stuff particularly in the air, I don't have as much control over how much I'm consuming at that point. So that's, that's where I think it gets really, and that's part of why I think we're able to have the tobacco related smoking laws that we have is because you know someone who doesn't smoke and doesn't want to participate uh, has the right to not have that happen. So. <clears throat> I think that's, you know, sort of some of the thinking there. And, and so, you know, but if, if it was all either within the food they were serving or, or uh, other edible type things that they're serving or other delivery mechanisms that, you know, uh, are, are not such that they put it into a larger sort of public space. Right. Within it, I, I think, you know, it's all, it's a lot more straightforward for us in that sort of case, because I think that solves a lot of problems. <clears throat> and I think, you know, I've, I've seen certainly uh, medicinal uh, apparatus that, that people use um that sort of you know uh that are still an in inhalation style of 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 uh equipment but it fully contains and cont you know the, the the marijuana smoke so <clears throat> you know that doesn't put it generally into the into the you know sort of the air in and around i think that's you know the, that's that's one of those where i i think the control both for staff that work at, as well as the other patrons is, is a is a critical question yeah 
um, on the topic of ventilation, I was in uh, New York City recently and um, they it was one of these cook at the table and they had these really powerful kind of ventilators. Um, so, you know, ventilation, I mean, I, I don't know what the evidence is on contact high these days, but certainly it's not healthy. So <laughs> ventilation is key. Yeah, geez. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. So, oh yeah, go ahead, Dylan. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, I, um, I don't know, I wouldn't be necessarily too concerned um, about other patrons uh, in that, that kind of situation. I think it ends up being a little bit more of, I think, just the, the, the nature of the activity. You know, if you go in there, it's more of a, a time thing, less that you're there for one beer that you can nurse. You know, it's, I'm in there for 20 minutes and then I got to get out or I'm, or I'm too high kind of thing. Um, and that, at the end of the day, if somebody's going to a, a marijuana recreational facility to smoke and they're complaining that they're getting too high i'm not <laughs> i think we're making making regulations to to, to the one in a thousand people uh, right. so i mean it's worth considering uh if it's if it's doable just for even just better ventilation for staff who will undoubtedly need to go into the rooms um at some point for for cleaning or, or what have you um but i think yeah i think as, as far as other patrons are concerned it's less of less of a concern of me uh for me anyways well i think about it this way is that you know if, you know if, if people want the an establishment like this for a social circumstance um you know they may you know uh they may want to stay a long time but not have a lot and and whether they can can control that or not so let's say you go and, and then the place gets busy so that there's a lot more people now you have to leave because these other people came and it's like, I still want to watch the game on the big TV while I'm mildly buzzed as opposed to, you know, what might be happening if I just stick around because the crowd came in. It's like, you know, part of why you went was to be with the crowd and, you know, sort of be in and amongst people. Um, so, I, I mean, I just think it's, it's consideration for sure. I mean, it's, you know, we can kill ourselves with trying to nuance it too finely, but I think we should be conscientious of that perhaps. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It's it's, it's worth considering because if it's easy to do, we should do it. But it's certainly one that talking about a business that who knows if one will ever even open up here in Amherst. Um, so we will we will see. We'll see, uh, and we'll also see what the Board of Health decides to do on that one too, whether or not they uh, they allow it. Because I know hookah bars, outright banned, cannot do them in Amherst. Right. Okay. All right. So Doug, will you be in touch with the Board of Health about that at some point? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll reach out about that. All right, super, thanks. Okay, if there anything else on this topic? No? Okay, so we did lunch cart. Guidelines, regulations for liquor license decisions. Where are we with that? I still have to input changes and mail draft too. So I'll okay. get All that right. before I'm making. All right, sounds good. I do think um, we are um, almost at the place where we could adopt those. So maybe we could set a target date for um, our, our the next meeting out after the 7th. Yes, that is the. The 21st. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Um, letter, let's see, guidelines are the letter to establishments. So Steve. So this I had, about, yeah, you were yes, gonna, yes, I had but, told Marion I was going to draft a letter for the establishments to remind them of the uh, um, regulations um, related to our next subject. But um, unfortunately, I totally forgot in the whirl of rental reg season this week, but um, I can um, send something along to you all maybe early next week and we can get feedback and send it out if it looks good. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, thank you very much. All right. So on to the next topic, ABCC hearing update. Okay, so Steve and I were at the hearing on the 14th um, and Rob Mora was there also. And the inspectors who, one of them who did the, uh, kind of did the, uh, the inspection and found the violations was there and just read off all of the, like kind of went through it very systematically. And uh, Junior Williams from Hazel's Blue Lagoon was there and um, it was very, it was over pretty quickly, wouldn't you say, Steve? And yeah. um, said that he had made improvements. Um, the, what he did offer as proof of improvements was a news article 
related to a concert. Is that right, Steve? That he was that the Blue was having at the end of May. I believe he's all that was mentioned in the hearing was a article published on May 30th, but I do believe it was likely that article that was in Mass Live. Right. I don't think it was net related to the violations. No, it was um, related to uh, a shooting in a Springfield nightclub. So they said they were right. going to have enhanced uh, pat down type security. Right. And um, he said they were going to be purchasing a new scanner or updating the scanner. And from what I understood from his testimony, he said that the security person who was involved is no longer there. So, um, I mean, I don't know, this is, you know, the ABCC, what they, I didn't, I'd never been to a hearing before. And so we, we all kind of logged on and they did their, had held the hearing, read out the testimony. There were, weren't really any questions for any, by anyone. Um, and then everyone it adjourned and um, we're waiting to hear what their findings are and what the, the penalty, if there is any. So Steve, did you have anything to add to that? Um, I think that covered the hearing itself um, right. pretty wonderfully. It was pretty much just a recitation of, um, of the investigator's report and a couple comments by uh, the owner. Mm -hmm. um, but I did um, get a response from Brian Riley about the question of parallel jurisdiction. Oh, great. Um, great. So he said that, uh, ironically, he had an ABCC hearing on those exact facts in 2014, um, where the ABCC did a sting and caught the restaurant serving to minors. They had their own hearing and gave a three-day suspension, but all three were held in abeyance. Um, the LLA for that town didn't like the result and held its own disciplinary hearing based only on the ABCC investigator's report and issued a three-day suspension. Um, surprisingly, that was the first time the ABCC had ever heard the issue. Um, but they uh, ultimately disapproved the suspension for um, essentially double jeopardy reasons um, where the Board of Selectmen in that town had no evidence of its own and the ABCC found that to be unfair. Oh, okay. um, but um, in a case where, um, you know, a, a licensee, you know, a similar situation like this where a licensee was then, um, you know, uh, a different violation occurred later and, you know, on the local level, you know, that could be um, justification for a, a stricter um, penalty than otherwise might be used. Okay. All right, great. That's so yeah. I'm thinking I should add language to reflect that in our license regulations. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. If I may, I think, I, I definitely think if the ABCC does, it, it sounds like from what Steve was saying is that we couldn't basically uh, bring them, you know, sort of bring them in front of us to do a hearing for the same uh, violation because A, we didn't collect the evidence, so we don't have it. Right. And B, it's kind of double jeopardy. But it is allowed, and I think this this is, you know, if you look at um, how the licenses are required, or, you know, piece of information that are required on the licenses that if they own other establishments, they have to list those and they have to list whether there's any violations because that's a critical piece of information for us relative to issuing a license. I think likewise, this is parallel. It's like the ABC finding something and potentially disciplining them can be a contributing factor in our evaluation of our penalty if there's a subsequent violation that we find. So I think that's that's something that we want to uh, definitely consider it. You know, uh, it's, it's not as though um, it's just a different governing, but it doesn't mean we ignore it. It's not, you know, inadmissible, uh, I, I guess, is maybe the term. So I, okay. I think that would be, I think we should keep that in mind that we, we can consider their, the ABCC's actions and, and the findings that they have as part of the information for us if we have a violation. So we don't have, we can basically, I think with what I was hearing from, from Steve was basically, you know, it, that if we do a violation, it's technically number two. So like we have a sort of, you know, listing of, oh, violation one, it's this, violation two, it's this, violation three, it's this. you know, we have a kind of progressive discipline mm -hmm. circumstance. I think we could and should count the ABCC hearing as, as one of those in the, in the count of violations. Okay. Even though we didn't exp expressly do it, it still counts. Okay. Um, but we just can't issue our own penalty on top of it. Yeah, I think that's okay. But if we had this issues, okay, all right. Got it. Got it. Um, any other questions, Dylan? Yes. I guess my question here too is like, what what mechanisms do we have for uh, our own type of enforcement? Um, you know, I know across the street it's something. You know, Garcia's does the Monday night uh, 
Monday Night Mariachi Band. I don't think they have a live music license, but so I tell people, I'm like, hey, I, I write the regulations. I don't enforce them. So mm-hmm. I guess they, they just do that. And uh, no, they, have oh, they have the license. They have, we approved they it. have a license. We gave it to them. Yeah. Oh, I must have missed that meeting then. <laughs> but um, I was going to say, like, what, what mechanisms do we have for, for an enforcement there? Uh, Doug? So I can answer that one pretty clearly. Actually, you can enforce it. <laughs> As license commissioners, I think we technically can. Uh, there was separate from this. Uh, there was an incident in Hadley with with one of the select board members who it, it was a local licensing authority uh, was trying to, to utilize a little more of his authority that was really there to to uh, impose some some things. But no, I think we could if if we were you know if any of us is it happens to be an establishment and we know that they violate the 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 uh, you know liquor regulations or whatever we are. Uh, we are entirely capable of, of essentially bringing it as, a, as an issue before our, ourselves for that purpose. We, um, and I think we only had to do this once, but I don't think we have to renew it. We, you know, we have delegated that authority uh, or created, uh, delegated uh, the police department as our agents for enforcement. So they do, and, and you know, they obviously do it, certainly if they hear complaints, but they do also periodically when they have an opportunity, have officers go undercover. Um, so they find officers that are younger looking uh, that, and go in and try to, to buy and see whether or not they did or didn't card and they you know, ask around. I mean, that's partly how we first heard from Porta yeah. um, way back when. Um, so they do serve as our agent. They do actively go out, you know, two or three times a year. I think they'd like, to, they would probably do it more if they had more opportunity to, but, but I think we can, we can be enforcement agents ourselves. I think we can. You know, it gets a little weird. It would be better if you notice something to call the police department. Say, hey, can you take a look at this? Because they're much better at the sort of pragmatic aspects of, of collecting evidence and making the case and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Counterpoint, Steve. When uh, when can we get our badge and gun? Like, <laughs> <laughs> step it up. I do actually know the build one of the at least one of the building commissioners is uh, appointed as a special police officer for some kind of oh. um, procedural reason, but um, he doesn't. I don't think he's assigned a badge and a gun, but oh. the constable maybe he helps him get the tickets. I don't know. Right. right. Well, Dylan, if you're looking for something else to do, please. Right, there we go. <laughs> please don't let us do that. Great. Um, any other questions about this? We're just going to wait. I guess see. We'll just wait for the ABCC decision. And we will report. Yes, Doug. Is the only question: Did they give any indication about when they would make a decision? No. no. Do you know how to find out about that, Steve? Is that just they just? Decided? I don't think there really is. Um, I mean, we uh, last hearing I attended. The only other hearing I ever attended was um, the uh, appeal hearing for um, uh, High Horse, and they never got back to us. The license ended up just expiring from non renewal, really. Um, huh but I think they're probably better with these kinds of things. And it's, we're a little bit out of the weeds of COVID now, but um, right. I don't, I mean, I really couldn't, couldn't even guess. Yeah. Is there someone we can call there? But um, I could, I out? could, I could reach out to somebody and yeah. ask when they. Okay. That, that would be good. Just so we know what their decision is. Okay. Um, and if I may jump um, on a related topic to topics not reasonably anticipated. Um. um Yes, did we have, oh yeah, let's go right on to that one. Yeah. Um, there was an advertisement um, I became aware of um, that I do feel obligated to share um, of Hazel's Blue Lagoon. Oh. Where this is the, uh, what can- The you happy hour. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Not so happy anymore. No. <laughs> June fifteenth. Oh, this was last night. Yeah, we missed it. I didn't make it, but have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to follow them on Instagram. I don't know what I'm doing here. Well, um, so, yeah, this is they. They don't. They need to know what the what the law is on happy hours. Yeah. Yeah, I sent um I was aware of this this um this advertisement as well, which um I guess isn't isn't prima facie am I pronouncing that right, lawyers, but um isn't prima facie evidence of um a happy hour violation, but a little bit suggestive. And then this one um certainly obviously is. Right. Um 
and so I sent um, the owner an email asking if he could explain that. Um, and then uh, about 15 minutes later, I walked out to get lunch and bumped into him in the parking lot. And um, we had a little conversation about it. And um, he didn't seem aware of the uh, regulation. So I filled him in. Um, I mean, the hour is also um, concerning. I, I forgot about that when I was speaking to him off guard. But um, the license only goes until one, of course. Yeah, that's not great. Um, okay. Can they, separate from the alcohol, can they, can they, uh, by virtue of their other license, because that says the DJ is there till two. Oh, right. That, are they able to stay open that late? Did they get, do they have that permission? Even if they don't, they can stop service of alcohol at one o'clock, they can stay open till two if they have the zoning uh, authority to do that. And, uh, if they, uh, yeah, that would be the thing I think about with that, with the two yeah. hands. Well, they're, um, let's look at their common Vic. Right, the common Vic, probably. And um, it doesn't actually appear they have a live entertainment either, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, I uh, how about we just invite them to come to the next meeting? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think, I thought they did a live entertainment license, because I knew I that they yeah, came to talk to us about it. We We knew they were wanting to do music in their in their space so i thought we granted we maybe we just said oh by the way you need one of these and maybe it, it, it never got filed but it might have been that too because i'm actually not seeing a common vic either and it, it could be this is a weird address it's kind of hard to find our system so um maybe it's just tucked away somewhere but um it could very well just not um have ever been applied for or issued okay can you um before we can you find out all of that, Steve? Uh, just see if you can find it in the system. Yeah, um, and I mean, then... we don't have many live entertainment licenses, so it'll just take me a second to right. look through all of them. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. So I don't think they have one. I'm confident they don't have one. Common Vic, it might be a bit of a deeper dive with the numbers there, but we don't have many live entertainments and okay. there is not one for that site. All right, so they need one of those. So can you um, email him and with a link to the live entertainment license? Yes, I can do I that, and I'll check on Common Vic too. Check on the Common Vic, and um, and he understands about the happy hour law. Um, I I yeah. tried to make it clear to him. Um, I mean, I don't know, um, you know, what what the board would like to do in this situation. I can I can have another conversation with him, or he could be brought in, or you know, this is a violation that could be pursued. I I, I felt I should leave the decision to you. He, he didn't really seem aware of the provisions, but. Um, I, I would lean towards having you have another conversation with him, Steve, yeah. before we bring them in front of us. Yeah, I, let's start with a conversation. Okay. I mean, would it be helpful to um, send them some decisions, you know, enforcing against happy hours so that I mean, those are there are plenty of those that will explain the law as applied to a case. Yeah, there's ABCC has a couple uh, helpful FAQs. Okay. Um, so, you know, maybe Steve, what we should do is start with some kind of letter or email with a lot of some of this stuff in there, and then because our next meeting isn't until the the seventh of July, and I mm -hmm. don't know, and then we can invite him, like suggest that he like invite him to the meeting on the seventh, just so that he comes prepared, if it's necessary at that point. How does that sound? Um, if it's necessary, meaning um, like if he's like, I don't know. Do we want to just talk to him anyway? Everybody? Yes. Yeah. It, it wouldn't hurt. I mean, it would be hope, hopefully the ABCC will have made a decision by the seventh. But I think the the reason for us to to have the conversation is right. just to to say, hey, you know. Um, you know, we, we're aware of the ABCC action. We're aware of what they did or didn't do. Yeah, we'll okay. know that we will measure. You know, we will 
consider that if there's any further violation, please you know be extra vigilant relative to this. Um, and and certainly, you know, uh, I mean, I think like you know the fact that it was yesterday on the half off, you know, uh, happy hour thing. I mean, we're definitely going to say, well, we're we're going to keep an eye on this uh, moving forward, partly because the ABCC found something, but also it appears there's some other things that are a little, uh, you know, uh, in violation as well. So you know, it, you know the advertisement may not be sufficient. Uh, evidence of of a violation but certainly we want them to kind of cease and desist on that we can kind of i think we can use it as an informational thing but also a warning like hey we noticed it and so you're gonna we're gonna take more serious action if there's a, another violation um and and again if there's other violations you know when we get to renewal time at the end of november we'll, you know we're not compelled to necessarily renew anyone's license um but if there are things that are you know if there's small but continuing problematic actions by them um you know i think that's that's a consideration when we go to do a renewal okay you know, even if it's not to you know that's a, a that's an okay. option available to us yeah. i think it's not renewal license we virtually never do but but i mean if, if we felt like we we're being kind of taken advantage of and not and then not being you know sincere about sort of meeting the regulations and, and state law where where they need to i think it's it's a consideration i don't want to yeah Overly threaten things, but I mean, I think this is a violation of the license. You can't, you know, advertising a violation of your license is, is inconsistent with your license. Right. I think that's correct. I think offer yeah. for sale is, yeah. Okay. All right. I was going to just say this in moderation rather than it being a calling them in for the seventh, could we work for them to get them in and we can discuss some of these things, but they're gonna have to get a common Vic and a live entertainment license. So by default, they'll be coming in right. on the seven yes. anyway. Right. So rather than kind of a, we wanna talk to you about this, I think just so people don't have their guards up and get really defensive, then that is it's better to fast track those and ask, and if in the meantime, Steve has sent an email with information about happy hour and other things that might be a little less controversial. I think that's a wonderful approach. Okay, everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the, the, you know, the other, I don't, it doesn't seem cool, but the other question would be sending this information to the ABCC. Yeah. I mean, they, they have an open case. They do. Should we do that? I'm, I'm not opposed to it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, what uh, the folks who are at the hearing, what, what do you guys think? I wanted to attend, I wasn't able to make it, but um, what, what would be your takeaway today? Did, did ownership really seem like they were oblivious to it? Like it's it's quite possible you got, you know, a, a, a bouncer at the door who's looking the other way because he's got a girl he's interested in. It's totally possible. You know, were they wholly unaware of this? It, it, or are they, you know, making a making a quick plug capitalizing on that under 21 market because the rest of these fools aren't, uh, aren't going for them? Yeah. I mean, the owner owns a place in Chicopee. So, Ostensibly, he is well versed in the carding and at least happy hour regulations. Right? I mean, that's statewide. Yeah. He, he, so he it's did. not like it's a new business owner. That is one thing to consider. He did seem very uh, conciliatory and apologetic. Um, he did, I remember a specific wording was to get a, another ID scanner. So, um, I mean, there was at least you know six documented fake ID. Well, one of the people didn't even have a fake ID, or at least they didn't give it to the ABCC. But there's at least five documented fake IDs. So, um, you know, either they weren't using it or they have a really terrible ID scanner. Right. Um, but um, yeah, Doug. I mean, I think you know the the notion of whether to forward those those uh, Instagram uh, ads 
to the ABCC, I think given what Allie just reminded us of relative to the fact they own another license in another community, I think that's a, because of that, I think it's more important for us, for Steve, for you to share that with ABCC, just to say, oh, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, this is, you know, that I think it's more important for us to send it. If they were, you know, if they were, um, you know, if this was their first license in the state or something like that, I think being a little less draconian would be okay. But I think in this, given, you know, that reminder that they own another uh, alcohol service, you know, in license in, in, uh, in the state, they really should be aware of that. And so I think that's worth sharing with the ABCC and it might impact their decision-making relative to their penalties. My understanding is they um, they closed that business to open this one, um, just as a matter of time, you know, time constraints. Um, but still. They, yeah, they, I mean, I, I could forward it along. I don't really think it could affect their current decision at all, because it's really, you know, totally separate charges. Right. Um, yeah, Which, it's tangential information for sure. Yeah. Right. So is that that place in Chicopee, was that a restaurant or did they have a liquor license on that state? I think it was a um, more traditional restaurant with a liquor license. With over there. Okay, so they should have known. All right, great. Well, sure, I guess just forward those Instagram pages and um, to the ABC. <laughs> Do we know if our police department is checking up? Steve, you sent them a copy of the ABCC report. Is that right? Yes, I spoke to them, and they're they're aware of it. They're aware of it. Okay, all right. So um, we'll just have to, and of course, if the Amherst police go in, that's a different kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I'd say if 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 Steve, you feel like you don't have a normal channel to have that exchange, and it seems very extraordinary, then then I guess I'm I'm you know, open about not doing it. But if, if you have a channel of communication with them anyway, then um, it just seems like pertinent. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a normal channel of communication with the investigators, although I, I do have the contact information of one. Uh, I don't remember if he was involved in this case or not. Um, I could send along, you know, with the, the parallel jurisdiction question. It's, um, it's interesting. I, mean, I think if it was, you know, the Amherst, um, and I don't, I'm not putting these words in, in your mouth, but if, if the situation was, you know, the Amherst, uh, you know, LLA is, you know, choosing not to um, enforce on this violation, but just wanted you to be aware. Um, I think that's one thing. I think just the context of, you know, um, you know, with the parallel jurisdiction, you know, is, is the town trying to, to, um, you know, not to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Am I, am I making, am I making sense yeah. there? We, want to look like, we don't want them to think we're letting things slide by. Is that what you're trying to say? Um, well, Ish. more just, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to put off the impression that, you know, we're, we're not not taking action, you know, just passing passing the buck along, I guess. And, you know, I think you know, we have you know, the, the board has every right to to um, take action or not take action on something. Um, but I think just uh, just, uh, you know, if, if there was a statement that, you know, just just so you're aware, but the LLA has, has decided not to to do any enforcement action on this, you know, versus just a. Uh, Oh. FYI, you know, you know what I'm saying? We're just, just, you know, so it doesn't seem like we're trying to, you know, have them do yeah. the enforcement work for us yeah. as opposed to just, uh, you know, we, you know, we address the situation with a conversation and, um, and but just so you're aware, I guess. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Steve, you'll be, you'll send an email to Mr. Williams with the, um, would cotton make sure the common Vic is up to date mm -hmm. and he needs a, a liquor license i mean a live, live entertainment, entertainment license and then um also information about the happy hour law mm -hmm. and the hours of operation hours of operation and then uh see if we can get that license as Haley said fast track so that he can come in on the seven and then we yeah. can have a conversation about that that would be great all right it's very important thank you so much all right anything else Oh, um, have you yes. heard about if they've extended remote meetings or what oh, yeah. the plan is for the summer? I'm glad you asked, um, although I don't have any good answer. Um, I was in a, uh, you know, a uh, department wide meeting today. Um, so there's a lot of other people who um, who uh, support boards and committees. And that question was asked and um, there was not an answer. So 
Um, I know, but I know people are talking about posting meetings. I don't remember off the top of my head when the, if the, um, if the, uh, I kind of missed a little bit of that conversation, or I didn't quite get the, a couple words there, but I don't know if um, somebody expected it to expire soon or if um, it was just a question of meeting posting of just, you know, just time coming up. I know somebody else asked is, um, you know, cause I'm kind of not sure how to post meetings coming up in July. So I, um, either way, we're gonna have to figure it out quickly and it's a, uh, not a, not a license commission specific issue. So um, I expect there will be some, some information coming down from on high soon and I will pass along to you as soon as I know. Steve, is the town room uh, enabled for, you know, interactive hybrid participation? My understanding is that it is, and it's um, and it's uh, been used as such by the town uh, council on in some occasions, but um, it's pretty labor intensive and complicated to set up. Okay, um, is is what I've heard. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so our next meeting is July seventh at five o'clock. And is there anything else that we need to discuss? Any other topics not anticipated? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Doug, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> you just froze. Oh, I froze? Yeah, for a second. Oh, sorry. Um, um, we're going to take a vote. So we've got the motion in the second, and we're taking a vote. Gaston? Aye. OK, Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. Kelly? I vote aye, five to zero. We're adjourned at 6, 18 p.m. Um, thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. And Thank you. Seven. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Good night. Enjoy the rest of your summer, or, or until July 7th, anyway. <laughs> July 7th. All right. <laughs>